Hanna, please take over. Okay. Knowledge has a beginning, but no. Says Gida as I anchor. Talk of the Energy Weekly Webinar Series, jointly organized by IEEE Kerala Section. Institute of Engineers, Kerala Foundation Trust, Truandrum, Life Member Affinity Group, IEEE Kerala Section. IEEE Engineering in Medicine and Biology Society, Kerala Chapter, and the Institute of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering. Once again, a hearty welcome to the 79th talk of Indo Society Weekly Webinar Series, IWWS. We have successfully completed 78 talks with boundless speakers, and the response we have been receiving is enormous. No catch for today's session, too. Today, on our 79th talk, we have we are extremely delighted to have with us Professor Anil Brahmanandan, sir, former principal, Garmin Engineering College, Barton Hills, Fund, sharing his perception on the paradigm shifts in education. Before we begin, participants are kindly requested to put their names to login, which you have used while registering. Also, uh, I would like to kindly bring your attention to the feedback link that will be provided during the session. Kindly fill the form and let us know your opinion. And please don't hesitate to mention if there is any requirement for the certificate to You may kindly raise your query. Uh, I think she's not the co Um. Sorry, uh, I request the host to please make Rushda as the co-host. She can do it. She can. Rushda, you can just go ahead and do your duty, please. Thank you, sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I feel it's my pleasure and privilege to be presenting IEEE family and to welcome each one of you to the 79th talk of Inter Society Weekly Webinar Series Talks. Let me appreciate the efforts of Harindralal Sir, co volunteers, and professionals of Kerala section who are supporting this event in making this a huge success for the past 78 talks, bringing out the best profiles and presentations to the virtual room. Moving on to my assigned duty, let me welcome our esteemed speaker, Anil Sir, former principal, Government Engineering College, Barton Hills, Trivandrum, who will be talking about the paradigm shift in education. We welcome you, sir. Next, I welcome Harindralal Sir, Chair of Inter Society, the leader of IWWS, to the evening. We welcome you, sir. Next, I would like to extend my warm welcome to volunteers of today's session, Hana Ansar, Anlon JS, Jacob Verghese, and Sai Krishna to the 79th talk. I wholeheartedly welcome all the co-organizing societies, the professional community, and the most charming participants to this wonderful evening. Once again, my cordial welcome to all of you to the 79th talk of Inter Society weekly, weekly webinar series. Thank you. Thank you, Rushta. Now I invite Sai Krishna Piers, IEEE EMBS volunteer, to introduce our illustrious speaker. A warm, very good evening to one and all who have gathered here. 
Today, we have with us our Honorable Speaker, Professor Dr. Anil B. to deliver a keynote on the topic, the paradigm shift in education. Our esteemed speaker, Dr. Anil B. had graduated in mechanical engineering from the College of Engineering, Trivandrum, and later did his MTech and PhD from IIT Madras. And after 33 years of professional career, he retired from service in 2016 as principal of Government Engineering College, Barton Hill, Trivandrum. Our honorable speaker is currently associated with Vidya International Charitable Trust as Honorary Academic Director of his retirement. He had the privilege to work as the Director of Kerala State Science and Technology Museum, as well as the Founder Director of Center for Research, uh, Engineering Research and Development. He also had the opportunity to work as Dean of Faculty of Engineering and Technology, University of Kerala during 2011 to 2013, and initiated uh, steps to establish TRESC Research Park in Trivandrum. Presently, he is the chairman of both the Technical Committee of Lotteries Department as well as the Technical Committee of KSSTM Science City Project. He is also serving as Margadeshak for accreditation in AICTE. Dr. Anil B was awarded the prestigious VKM Award for uh, Best Engineering Quality Teacher in Kerala 2009 as well as the CETISTE Best Researcher Award 2009, Special Appreciation Award from ISTE New Delhi 2012 and 2013, IIE uh, National Productivity Award in 2014, 2015, and 2019 for his pivotal role in the related fields. He had represented India in the program Higher Studies and Research in Germany, organized by the federal government of Germany and was uh, invited as a distinguished education speaker in the International Conference IEOM 2015 at Dubai. Dr. Anil B is also currently active in more than 10 professional society and is fellow in societies such as the IE1, IEE, and AESI. Once again, on the 79th talk of IWWS, we are honored to welcome Dr. Professor Anil B to this session. A hearty welcome to you and over to your sessions. Okay, thank you, Sai Krishna. So the wait is over. Now let's all synchronize our attention towards our esteemed speaker, Professor Anil B. Sir, the platform is all yours. Good evening. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, respected uh, uh, Harindra sir and uh, other uh, participants of this uh, program who are representing various uh, professional societies, the uh, organizing volunteers, and all others who are attending this function. A good evening to all of you. Uh, today's talk uh, uh, will be touching upon the history of education and also the changes that has taken place and the new uh, paradigms uh, that we are going to witness in the days to come. So let me share my screen. Okay, is uh, visible? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Now, uh, the webinar is uh, organized in the following fashion, like uh, I'll be touching upon the background and maybe I'll talk upon the evolution of uh, learning and education through the history of mankind, the present technology trends and uh, the desirable competencies that are required in 21st century, then the present educational technology trends, and of course, what is there in future, the types of educational systems that we'll be using in the days to come. The progress of humanity, if you just look at it, it's uh, a result of uh, the transmission of uh, accumulated knowledge as well as uh, skills and culture from one generation to another. So you keep on accumulating knowledge based on your observations and other things, and then uh, based on your own experience, and you pass it on to the next generation. And the processes that you use in accumulating this knowledge also 
uh, helps you in creating new knowledge and also for translating this knowledge into maybe uh, applications which are useful to the society. And the methods and uh, tools used for knowledge transfer depends upon uh, the, the needs of the society and also the social environment and also the technology that is available at that point of time. So let me introduce uh, some of the terms which I'll be using often in this uh, lecture. The term learning, it's a cognitive process for acquiring new skills, knowledge, and culture. So it's a, a lifelong process. All of us undergo this, and uh, we do this for acquiring knowledge as well as skills. And of course, our behavior also is uh, in, uh, to a great extent influenced by the kind of learning that we have. Uh, if you, uh, the, of course, uh, learning can be done both in formal as well as in informal settings. So if you uh, do it in a formal setting, you institutionalize it, you call it as education. So imparting knowledge by a formal learning process or through instruction process, you call it as education. And the institution that you have for uh, this formal education, you call it as a school and that process you call it as schooling. As I mentioned earlier, learning is a lifelong process. On the other hand, schooling is uh, short term. So that means the education that you uh, formalized, uh, let us say institutionalized education is a short term uh, process compared to the learning, which is lifelong. Uh, I told you about the institution where uh, the formal education will take place. Let, uh, most of us call it as a school. Uh, when I say school, it's not primary or secondary school. Uh, any institution where you have this formal kind of education, so you have a law school or medical school or engineering school, okay, all that are schools. And often we, we consider schools as uh, indispensable. Yes. If you want to have education and learning, we feel that schools are essential. And we have been uh, told by our parents, our educators, peers, politicians, bureaucrats, the entire world, that without schools, the conventional education and the society itself will collapse. Is it true or not? It's a point which we have to debate. Of course, there are different types of, uh, I mean, arguments. One such argument is from uh, Ken Robitz. Oh, his famous uh, lecture in TED uh, series, you can see that do school skill creativity. It's a very famous, uh, I mean, a lecture. I think it is uh, the most watched uh, lecture in TED series. Okay, uh, he argues that uh, people are, or peoples are uh, schooled to confuse. We confuse teaching with learning, it's not. Grades with competence, uh, that's uh, to a certain extent it is true. Because uh, if you have a high grade, that doesn't mean that you are competent in that uh, subject. Degrees are uh, mistaken for education. Similarly, fluency of handling a as, uh, language is often uh, thought as he is knowledgeable in that uh, topic. So like that, uh, several things he has pointed out. And 90% uh, of it is true as also. In a similar line, Ivan Illich also has said that schools pervert the natural inclination to learn. So they inhibit the learning. Maybe in the conventional sense, we say that they provide education, but in the learning sense, whether you acquire the necessary competencies, whether the schools have failed us or not, that I'm not sure. Because uh, even now, we also feel that uh, the, uh, the grade is the ultimate thing or the degrees are the ultimate thing. But slowly things are changing. 
you see that most of the organization, especially in the private sector, they don't bother about the degree. If you show the competency, they hire you. That stage has come and the days to come will be more, uh, uh, will move more towards that trend. So in the lighter sense, uh, often uh, people say that most people uh, survive and succeed in life not because of, but in spite of their schooling. Anyway, it's uh, in the lightest sense. And uh, uh, we are talking about the paradigm shift. So I, let me mention what is a paradigm. A paradigm is a set of concepts and practices of uh, a particular knowledge domain. It's a mode of inquiry together with uh, related uh, principles, models, taxonomies, methods, so it gives you a good perspective in presenting uh, the knowledge domain. And uh, paradigm keeps on changing. The way you look at things and present things, that also keeps on changing. As in when you have new knowledge or uh, the way of thinking changes, or if there are any fundamental changes in the society, it can be political or economic or social changes that are happening in the society, or some of the technological changes that are happening, a paradigm shift uh, occurs. So uh, one prominent thing which all of us know, uh, we have been um, thinking about the, the, the uh, geocentric uh, concepts, but from that, the heliocentric, that concept has entirely changed the way in which uh, we look at uh, uh, the the uh, physics or maybe the way in which the whole uh, universe works. So when a paradigm shift occurs, the world view of the domain changes and it is replaced by a new world view. And if you just look at uh, the uh, forces that uh, drive changes in education, education is a very, very prominent area because uh, we know Education is the one which uh, is used for providing the means by which one can get a job and uh, a living. Okay. So what are the forces that drive change in education? Uh, basically, it's all, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in the, the paradigm shifts. Here also the same thing, technological innovation. And uh, the globalization and internationalization process was uh, the, the political and social uh, systems that change or changes in socioeconomic landscape. Because, uh, now in education also we see that uh, uh, the emergence of uh, universal access to higher education. Uh, on some a time, the education was uh, limited to only a very, very small section of the society. But that concept has changed and uh, now we have universal access to higher education and right-based approach. The education is now a right, okay, because the constitution itself says it's the right of the child to get education. As a result, the nations will, the nation which uh, says that it's a right, they will, the state will provide the necessary means for providing the education. And of course, uh, the change can be due to emergence of new forms of uh, teaching methodology, or it can be from the customer side, it can be from the demand side, the high customer expectations that also can force a change in education. And briefly, I'll touch upon the history and the evolution of uh, learning and education. So if you just look at the prehistoric era, uh, people were hunter gatherers, so uh, their needs are very, very limited. Maybe they would like to uh, get some food and uh, a shelter from uh, the the uh, natural forces or other animals and other uh, persons. Okay, so there uh, the the kind of knowledge they required was very, very, very limited. And this is transmitted or received and transmitted by maybe observing or by imitation or exploring, okay? 
and by exploring you get new knowledge as well and uh, there was no formal systems only informal systems of learning were present at that period point of time but later let us say 10000 years ago when agricultural era started when agriculture be, uh, began or when the plants were uh, uh, planting was done in a very very systematic way uh, we needed knowledge about the crops or maybe seasons pests or tools and implements for doing it and of course uh, production of these tools and uh, processing this uh, grains and things like that so you need skills for tool making and uh, the kind of uh, knowledge transmission was primarily by word of mouth and observation and of course a little bit of uh, documentation also was present but the formal education especially literacy numeracy and all was uh, limited to a very small segment of the society uh, those who have or possess the land and uh, uh, the money and the power okay so education was limited to only a very small section of the society but once uh, the the industrial era started let us say some 300 years ago there was a rapid or uh, mass demand for skilled workforce maybe people who are skilled in doing factory work or maybe people who are uh, good at uh, literacy as well as uh, numeracy because new areas of uh, business also started evolving maybe banking or money lending or insurance or uh, other areas where lot of data processing is essential or data documentation is necessary so the demand for the people who are skilled increased rapidly so the old word of mouth or maybe a gurugula system was not sufficient to get to the needs so then we went in for the formal university system where people are Uh, disciplines have been compartmentalized and uh, each uh, each topic or each subject you have a number of courses attached to that and the specialist teachers will be coming and uh, giving lectures or imparting knowledge to a large number of uh, persons and there will be methods by which the knowledge will be tested and a formal education system and a proof of uh, their knowledge also will be given in the form of a degree or certificate or a diploma or whatever okay so that is where the formal university system started and uh, around 50 60 years back with the invent of digital computers uh, things have changed uh, quite a bit because uh, the communication systems networking and all evolved and uh, the competency is essential for uh, the the workforce also change uh, not only numeracy and uh, literacy but you need logical thinking structured problem solving and other kinds of skills communication skills and uh, okay those kind of uh, skills are also uh, essential since uh, computer became central we have computer based education computer aided teaching learning management systems moocs 3d modeling walk throughs conference flats and what not this is the kind of thing what we experience today and coming to the next phase uh, at the moment we are in the interface of uh, the information era and the new era which is about to come it's often called the exponential era or conceptual era or sometimes it is called a consumers era or customers era here we we expect uh, disruptive innovations to take place as a result hundreds of new products will be coming into the market to cater to the various needs of the society uh, high, high speed computing uh, will be present hyper global connectivity high speed connectivity uh, will be possible massive data storage and also uh, means by which the data can be analyzed data visualization can be done okay and advanced algorithms for processing this data 
then also we find that due to advances in medicine and healthcare the we, we have a longer life span of uh, human beings which also will pose a lot of uh, things because uh, at the moment um, the people are employed till maybe 60 65 and maybe under 10 15 years they will live but now what happens is people will start living more than 100 110 so that means after 55 60 they have another 50 years to live okay and they are uh, most of them are active also so that poses uh, new problems because things they have learned already will not be sufficient to uh, take them further because new new things are happening every day so lifelong learning unlearning and relearning so th- those things will be essential during that point of time and uh, another uh, major change that will uh, take place in the product uh, sense will be personalization of the products whether it is an automobile or a shirt or a pen people would like to get it customized in a similar fashion the services also we need personalized services compared to let's say ready made services then um, people are more worried about the sustainability so sustainable development models even in education we have to think of means by which this has to be incorporated and uh, um, uh, unlike other uh, era here the global marketplace because the boundaries are slowly going off so whatever thing product that you are making or the people who are teaching it is meant for the global market so this is what uh, we are going to experience now but i'm not sure whether it will last for another 15 20 years or maybe 50 years that i'm not sure the computer era or information era by 60 years it has almost matured now we are about to go to the next uh, era industrial era was there for 300 350 years the uh, computer era lasted only for 50 60 years so maybe exponential or conceptual age for another 20 25 years not sure now in the new world what are the kind of competencies that we talk about of course the numeracy literacy and all is basic things i think assuming that universally it is available okay what are the additional things that we look for is critical thinking skills creativity the uh, ability to uh, bring out something new right then collaboration because uh, only teamwork will uh, individually you cannot uh, carry out tasks so collaboration so the, the uh, education systems that you uh, create also must uh, provide for that kind of collaboration right from uh, the the uh, lower levels then communication skills was not only uh, oral and uh, uh, written communication but other forms of communication as well so you need information literacy uh, by means that, that I, i would say that digital literacy a person must be competent in using the computers and uh, information processing then media literacy one must be very very thorough with the kind of media that you are using okay then technology literacy because uh, uh, yeah, the newer and the better products are coming into the market every day to help you in all your tasks so you must be technology savvy to to you know, get used to these kind of devices and you must be flexible that means uh, if you are very rigid and you say that i will do only this i will not change uh, that will not work that's not going to work in the coming days then of course you have to take the leadership and initiative and uh, the productivity so if you want to be very very uh, let us say um, cost uh, effective then uh, you must be highly productive your productivity must be high and uh, definitely other social skills to keep you going in the new society now this uh, picture i hope it's uh, visible right it's a fork of sheep so despite the changes in technology economic uh, changes political setting the models of education has remained unchanged since uh, 19th century 
uh, when I say uh, it does not change, it's only little in the sense. 90% uh, of it is not changed. Maybe there are some minor changes, but no major change. In the last three, 300, 350 years, no major change has happened. So this standardized model, uh, we have a standardized uh, curriculum. The traditional things, we have a standardized curriculum. And uh, we also use a conventional system for evaluation. That is also a summative uh, at the end. We check whether uh, he has uh, acquired the skill. Are you checking whether he has acquired the skill? No, we are only checking his memory, whether he has memorizing the lessons or not. But at no point of time, the competencies are checked. So this is so, even in spite of all these changes that we are talking about, even in the um, modern era, this is the situation. Now, some of the current technology trends that we expect, and it is present. I'm not talking about uh, things which will happen in future, but that uh, very difficult to predict. The technology which is available now, let us have a look. Uh, improved IT infrastructure, it's happening, all of us know. And affordable and fast connectivity, that is also true because 3G to 4G to 5G, and maybe a better uh, ways of uh, getting connected, faster ways of connecting, more devices getting connected is a reality. Then real life visualization technologies. Uh, we are familiar with uh, virtual reality and uh, augmented reality. So these technologies, visualization technologies is going to impact heavily on education. Then improved haptic interfaces and devices. So far uh, we have devices which will help you in see things and uh, maybe hear things, but uh, interfaces which will help you in feel things, right? So uh, such haptic interfaces are getting developed and uh, right now also some of them are uh, in the experimental stage and uh, being used. Different types of sensors as well as actuators and devices which will help you with your senses. So you get a feedback as you do in the real uh, life, the system also will be able to give from the virtual uh, device when you are handling, it will be able to give you a uh, feeling of maybe a push or a heat or uh, any or a uh, shock or whatever, okay? Those kind of haptic sensors uh, and interfaces are a reality today. And Internet of Things, when you have hundreds of sensors, uh, devices, actuators, motors, okay, uh, and all these are connected by means of IoT. This is also a reality now. 3D printing and robotics, 3D, so when a new part is to be manufactured, it's an additive, uh, I mean, um, manufacturing process. So from small parts, even buildings are being uh, 3D printed now. And robotics, all of you know what it is. Then artificial intelligence and machine learning, this is also going to change the educational fees in a many, many major way. And of course, blockchain technology, this will help you in uh, maintaining the records. So we, we are uh, talking about, uh, in the later slides, I'll talk about how the records of the students can be maintained right from LKG up to maybe up to his uh, death, right? Because it is lifelong learning that I'm talking about. The, so competencies that he acquire, the kind of uh, certifications and other things he has, his weaknesses, all those things can be tracked and uh, stored using uh, blockchain technology. And data analytics, because it's, uh, uh, anal this field is being uh, coming up in a big way. So this also will help educational technology. I'll, I'll uh, uh, explain it in more detail in the coming slide. Of course, nanotechnology, biotechnology, and all uh, uh, technologies which you are aware of. And this neurochips, uh, it has already been demonstrated, but uh, uh, it is still at evolve. Of course, uh, Elon Musk is up to that. Because once uh, the neuro 
chips are in place maybe reading and other things will become obsolete because right uh, interface to your brain can be given from the computer itself okay now some of the educational technology trends the, the other one was uh, major technology trends coming to educational applications e learning all of you are aware from face to face classroom teaching now uh, right from lkg up to uh, let us say phd everyone is using e learning because the the pandemic covid pandemic uh, has uh, played havoc and uh, in the chaos you can see that uh, the e learning has emerged even though even e learning was there for 20 25 years people have not taken it very seriously but uh, the pandemic has made it a reality and uh, we have seen that uh, e learning is possible right from lkg up to a phd level so at any level e learning is possible and uh, going back to face to face will be a retro great step anyway uh, we'll see how it will uh, move forward then we have collaborative teaching and learning so i, I mentioned to you earlier that th this is a concept which uh, helps you in uh, let us say uh, working in groups even in our um, let us say studies we uh, talked about uh, group studies okay combined studies and things like that it's a, a small example of uh, this collaborative learning but that will be extended to formal uh, setting and uh, tasks will be given to groups of students rather than individuals then experimental learning and immersive learning you have immersive learning experience so uh, one uh, objection to e learning is that you will not uh, have uh, the the practical experience but in immersive and experimental or experiential uh, learning technology uh, you will have virtual systems where you can immerse in and then uh, handle objects as you do in the real uh, life so so with haptic technology haptics devices and other things we will be in a position to experience the experiments and physical objects and this is going to change educational technology in a big way then social uh, social media and learning all of you know uh, we have this uh, not only children but uh, even uh, elders you can see that um, at least a major portion of their their uh, time is spent on social media whether it is a messaging system or facebook or twitter or whatever okay or creating blogs a lot of their time is being spent uh, in social media so uh, why can't we use that as an opportunity to to enhance the educational experience a blended learning will be um, co combination of these things uh, combining um, face to face with uh, other forms of education and some people have already tried and some results are also available then a new concept that is coming in is the personalized curriculum or customized learning and the earlier model of education i told you that it's a standardized curriculum same curriculum for everyone if there are 1000 students or let us say 50000 students in engineering okay out of that let us say uh, 10000 uh, in mechanical engineering all mechanical engineering students will be learning the same curriculum okay so instead of that uh, in the days to come we will be having a personalized curriculum okay person who is um, taking up a, a major in uh, mechanical engineering maybe he is have options to learn a little bit of electrical little bit of um, electronics and a little bit of arts or a little bit of computer science and the competencies acquired in will be attached to his uh, portfolio okay a personalized curriculum so that means no two uh, curriculum will look alike 
And uh, since we are not bothered about the degree that you attain, and you look at uh, the competencies that a person acquires, it works well. And coming to learning analytics, because it's an uh, extension of data analytics, that you acquire the data of the individual and you create, uh, I mean, uh, scenarios where you, or you look at it and what are the defects in or what are the drawbacks of that person and uh, where the help is required. Okay. Uh, whether is it in writing or is it in speaking or whether it is uh, essay writing or in problem solving. So the data collected uh, throughout his life can be used for creating models by which um, specific problems of the student can be identified and it can be rectified. Okay. So learning analytics become a big area and it will help uh, in formulating the personalized curriculum as well. Then uh, the gamification, it's, uh, it's again going to be a big uh, area uh, because it's a problem solving approach. As well as uh, youngsters are concerned, we know that uh, they spend quite a lot of time in gaming and even I mean, elders also like uh, playing games, right? So uh, the gamification or in this particular approach, the, the um, what we want to teach will be presented by means of a game and the models will be created so that once you play that game, you acquire that competency. So this has already been proved uh, for past uh, I, uh, six years, the SpaceX uh, team, their uh, children, the children of uh, SpaceX uh, uh, company, uh, they have a school called Astranova, right? They employ this technique and they, they have found that it is very successful. And uh, at the moment, they are offering it to, uh, offering it worldwide for other students also to take up, other kids also to take up. And of course, uh, social media, I, I don't want to elaborate any more because various uh, social media platforms are there, uh, which can also be used effectively for education and educational marketing. That is also one area which you have to look at marketing of the education. And uh, artificial intelligence in education, this is going to change the whole uh, scenario. First and foremost, uh, the AI is going to replace or to certain extent um, replace the teachers and enhance uh, the ability of teachers already in the field. We have um, chatbots, even most of the it's a technology which is available now. Okay. Uh, you open an application immediately, the chatbot will be there. It'll ask whether you need any help. You uh, give a chat, you uh, say, give your query, so immediately it will give some answer. Uh, so, in educational technology, also, you will have that uh, chatbot, which will help you in answering your questions. So, you play a video, and if you have some doubts, uh, the students uh, will type the question, and these chatbots will be answering those questions right and uh, the kind of questions that come in will go into the database of these chatbots and as a result what happens is as and when the should more and more people are using the system its uh, vocabulary its uh, knowledge base also will increase and if by any chance the system uh, is unable to answer the question so there will be back support from where the experts will be contributing to the answer. Okay, so over a period of time, what happens is uh, the, the the system becomes a expert, and he'll be uh, his knowledge base will be much much superior to human beings. Okay, and uh, you can have digital assistants in your class. So you deliver your lecture through your e-learning platform, a recorded video or online platform and leave the rest to the digital assistant or the chatbot, 
okay and only when there is uh, some problem uh, you need intervene okay. and uh, the boards the, the chat boards uh, instead of chat boards the other uh, i mean um, uh, software can help you in preparing the content that to a smart content which contains both videos or audios or textual material presentations examples case studies okay because quite a lot of uh, knowledge is available in the net so these boards will crawl the net collect data then prepare the material and uh, an expert can vet it and then put it in place and intelligent tutoring systems so intelligent tutoring systems uh, you will have uh, systems by which uh, or devices which will track uh, the students and uh, it will tell whether attention is there or not whether they have understood it or not so by facial expression or the expression in the eyes or whether you are uh, sleeping dosing or other uh, body features will be identified by the system and it will uh, react accordingly okay so intelligent tutoring systems are uh, coming into place then personalized assessment uh, as i mentioned earlier individual attention will be given his history will be tracked and uh, then this assessment will be done and what type of uh, assistance is required by the students or in which area he is weak that can be uh, supplemented by the personalized assessment then automated evaluation and grading so because the regular grading that you are talking about the, it's a monotonous activity so the teachers need not spend their valuable time for this because the system itself can do it in a better way it was manually if you are grading it depending upon the mode maybe sometimes even if i am valuing it maybe i will give 10 marks next time i am doing it i will be giving 9 or maybe i will give 11 depending upon the mode yeah. or so but in an automated evaluation system the computers will not make that kind of a mistake so grading and all will become more uh, precise then the content analytics and intelligence it is uh, basically on uh the the collecting the content and uh, uh, looking at the, what is the response it is uh, making and how effective is it, it is that is being studied in the content analytics and uh, based on this content analytics you can you can change the format or increase the let us say textual content or audio content or case studies or what else. then information visualization Uh, this uh, new area even in uh, newspapers you can see that earlier uh, the data was presented by textual matter but now things are being done using graphs and other kinds of uh, graphics which will give more color uh, to or more meaning to the text that is being presented so information visualization is another uh, area which can be automated also data which is given to uh, that uh, ai system it can prepare a necessary visualization uh, device or graphics so what is there in the future as far as uh, education is concerned uh, first and foremost is um, it's a borderless world so you will be um dealing with the uh, internationalization so uh, even people will come from other countries to our country and uh, our students anyway there are many of them are going outside and other countries so it's a borderless kind of education then uh, virtual labs and immersive learning was uh, i told you uh, the virtual reality and uh, augmented reality that becomes a norm especially uh, for visualizing things right for example if you want to learn about the heart you can go inside the heart and see or if you want to see a particular operation 
because uh, nowadays uh, only in very specialized hospitals you will be able to see a particular operation being done you can you will be able to see or maybe you have to see a recorded video on the other hand uh, using a virtual thing you yourself can do the operation even if you make a mistake nobody is going to die okay so you can come back and do it in the proper fashion and uh, of course we um, other uh, uh, mix of actual and augmented campuses so face to face i don't say that it will go off completely but still it will be there but it will be augmented by uh, these uh, virtual laboratories and uh, other uh, e learning uh, facilities okay so there will be a mix of actual and augmented uh, campuses and uh, adaptive learning platforms this is a platform where um, based on the requirement of the students the learning abilities and uh, his requirements the platform will suggest uh, what are the things that has to be used and uh, uh, this will help in uh, achieving the optimized output uh, from the user then of course there will be virtual universities where 90 or even more a percentage of work will be automated like academic work as well as um, administrative work because administrative work if you just look at it um, let's say uh, getting admissions collecting fees issuing receipts or scheduling classes okay, giving admission to hostels or whatever okay all this uh, i mean administrative work can be fully automated without any problem and that will happen whether we like it or not that will happen because uh, after all it is economies that is going to work right and um, you know, one uh, opposition to this will be people will lose jobs of course this has been there when the computers came in okay but uh, you have to find new fields where employment opportunities are there so um, academic work also i said uh, even teaching part of it can be the, the virtual assistants and other things grading assessment all these can be so issue of uh, certificates or competency uh, proof all that can be done by uh, automated means and you can have a completely virtual university also it is not uh, impossible it is possible and it will happen and another change that is going to happen is instead of the conventional degrees uh, people will go for competency based uh, micro diplomas or certificates or micro degrees or degrees with uh, many minors okay one major degree with many minors uh, so that you will have more opportunities outside and uh, the it will be competency based so if you have such and such a uh, diploma uh, people know that you have such and such a um, i mean uh, competency and evaluation is not uh, summative it will be formative that is on the go you will be assessed and uh, uh, you will be given the badge so not the uh, end semester or end of course assessment okay and another change that is about to happen is unbundling of services so if you just look at a university or college you find that uh, there are many areas or many functionalities to it and uh, getting the subject content is only one of the functions another one will be getting the campus experience another one will be uh, to have some communication skills and other things with your friends and another thing will be uh, uh, attending a uh, football match or a game or some arts festival so that means uh, in a campus there are various functionalities and at the moment uh, the entire thing uh, is co considered as a single entity and a fees is collected so when you uh, pay for the course that means that is for the entire thing now unbundling means for if you want e learning you pay only for e learning 
okay face to face you need not bother because face to face will be much costlier compared to e learning and similarly if you want the campus experience that means you may have to pay additionally right so unbundling of services and those services which you are using you pay for it okay it looks good as far as a customer is concerned and the person who is providing the service also he uh, gets maximum benefit for whatever service he is providing and uh, when i talk about unbundling maybe some of the experiences will be given by the third party providers so including the evaluation grading can be done by a third party even today that is happening okay proctored tests done by various agencies okay similarly the university exam can be done by a third party or practical can be done by a third party if okay, you want to do a computer lab you go to a computer club exclusively for that purpose and you do the practical there right you need not be in the institution where you are doing it okay or centralized facilities in every town you have let us say heat engine lab or network lab or whatever you go there and then do your uh, practical so third party providers will be giving you the service then um, another uh, thing that's going to happen is uh, governments will cut down the funding to the universities the public funding will be coming down because um, priorities will change so uh, one uh, way of doing it will be there will be tie up with the corporates okay so maybe infosys college of engineering trivandrum tie up so or maybe tata with some other institution so corporates will be having a high stake in the institution and um, they in turn uh, will get uh, uh, students or products or uh, people who are trained in their uh, requirement okay so uh, that is one possibility okay and uh, government is slowly withdrawing from the the especially in higher education field in primary and uh, other um, high school education it will be there but in higher education there is a chance uh, that uh, academy uh, corporate tie up and uh, and academic bank of credits uh, even the nep 2020 specialized uh, this academic bank of credits so the credits that we earn uh, will be fully recorded and uh, uh, at any time you can leave a course you can come back come back to the course for lateral entry and uh, lateral exit and entry that's possible and depending upon the credits that you acquire on a specific uh, area uh, you are given um, a particular degree or whatever okay so bank of credits then a personalized curriculum i think i have uh, already mentioned so um, so far we have seen uniformity in all these curriculum but uh, from that uniformity we will go to diversity then of course quite a lot of experimentation will be there in content and as well as in delivery okay uh, i just uh, tell you um, this is a certificate sample certificate of iit madras for their bachelor of science programming and data science this is a virtual course online course so iit madras even in india iit madras is offering a course online bachelor of science in uh, programming and data science so even though some of the things which uh, i say looks awkward or where it's about to happen of course uh, i must mention about uh, the hidam curriculum as well okay uh, so it is basically the provisions made in the curriculum uh, to have different types of competencies in the student to face the real world of course may may various were choose like honesty punctuality communication skills presentation skills teamwork all that uh, skills or competencies required are built into our curriculum itself but unfortunately what happens is 
people will not uh, see this because there is no one to one mapping of this competency with an activity okay so some of the things they just leave it even teachers and students they leave it and as a result the hidden uh, curriculum is not uh, uh, in action now so what is meant by this uh, hidden curriculum is not achieved uh, hopefully in the uh, new setup people will be more realistic and uh, uh, when we go in for the competency based grading and the competency based assessment um, formative assessment maybe these things will naturally come into play so i think uh, this is what i just wanted to share and if you have some questions you can okay thank you so much sir for this wonderful session it was great listening to you uh so we have received some queries uh, regarding the session uh it will be very kind of you if you respond to this doubt sir shall i read it out for you uh, yeah sure sure i will just try to <laughs> uh, answer them in whatever possible way i i, I know i'll just try to answer okay okay sir first question is from lily kutty ma'am and she has requested to please explain the role of universities in the exponential or conceptual era the role of universities uh basically uh, uh, when we say university it is an institution which will give impart knowledge and the competencies to an individual and uh, give a stamp that okay such and such an individual is having such and such a competency so as a testing agency as an approving agency as an agency which will give you a stamp universities are essential it can be a small or large but it is essential so in exponential area also uh, when somebody wants to hire you can uh, test the competency on your own but uh, if the organization is small maybe you don't have time and uh, money to do that so you have to rely on somebody else who will say that such and such a person has such and such a competency so to that extent yes universities are essential and again um, suppose somebody is doing a work or Uh, education in a different part of the country migration there again somebody has to uh, say that uh, this person is having the prerequisite to uh, do the work or further the work so in that uh, level universities are essential i hope uh, that answers your question Yes. Second question is from Alan Francis Joseph, and the question is: So, what's your opinion about job-oriented education? He further said that many people are still jobless nowadays. Is this scene shows the problems in Indian education system? <laughs> First of all. for indian uh, in the indian context the main problem is the population right we have too many people for too less uh, job and of course we have not moved into a level where we can provide uh, i mean employment for all because once uh, because, uh, this our population is an advantage also because everyone require uh, uh, products different types of products So that means the requirements are also there but we have not uh, reached that level and what is your opinion about uh, the job oriented education okay the ultimately all education uh, philosophically we can say that uh, i want education to get enlightenment <laughs> 
but maybe people who are already retired and uh, uh, want to let us say uh, have a nice time maybe for them education will be an enlightenment for all others education and learning is mainly meant for uh, getting a job so that they can get some salary and with that money they can enjoy their life so job oriented education all education is mainly job oriented itself okay sir uh, next question is will you please discuss some tools process and outcome of learning analytics this was also raised by lilikutty ma'am uh, can you repeat the question sure sir will you please discuss some tools process and outcome of learning analytics uh, at the moment i am unable to uh, i mean uh, point out uh, the the name of the software or anything like that of course i can share it with you if you uh, my email id will be given at the end so if you communicate with me i can share some material on this area okay sir uh, next question was put forward by sangaram c pillai sri kumar and it raises with the advent of new technologies exposure to social media worldwide there is a darker area in education which results in the decline of social values increasing cyber crimes the addition of disastrous games gambling and all happening so in our curriculum a corrective measure is required and how it can be achieved in your opinion here, here again uh, i will uh, ask you to just uh, remember the hidden curriculum which i have uh, mentioned so when we are framing a curriculum so in addition to the subject matter we are putting certain uh, aspects which will help acquire other competencies right so by doing uh, one activity or other which is mentioned in the curriculum you will be acquiring those kind of competencies whether this honesty or maybe uh, truthfulness or maybe good behavior punctuality so in a similar fashion here while forming the curriculum itself you will have activities and uh, um, other uh, case studies which will bring in this kind of a i mean um, value uh, to us to the student it is possible whether you use it or not that is a different issue so if you take a knife you can use it for cutting an apple that means uh, using it for a user purpose or you can use it for stabbing somebody right so the social media also is like that social media has got uh, wonderful opportunities for using it in a positive way at the same time let us say 20 to 30 percent of the time it will be used uh, misused also so people only look at uh, the the dark side of it the technology has got so many advantages but uh, this cannot be i mean uh, misusing the technology we cannot prevent is we can uh, reduce it and uh, we can uh, keep uh, vigil and make some laws and uh, the government can have some legislation and things like that to control it other than, other than that I, i think everyone has to be very very aware of uh, these bad effects of such technology and uh, media okay okay sir uh, next query is from nn panikkar will institutional forms of education with syllabus give way to free styles such as uh, work study and home learning and he has also congratulated you for this excellent presentation uh, thank you sir uh, I, we have been associated in number of occasions thank you sir for the uh, comment and institutional forms of education uh, give way to free styles yeah sure i think that will happen that will happen because um, uh, the uh, as i said earlier the curriculum 
then syllabus and all can be personalized and uh, the, the 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 way in which you learn there again you have a choice maybe a part of it you can go for face to face maybe part of it you do it at home okay or part of it you do it as a um, internship in an organization it is possible okay so it, it all depends anyway no clear cut uh, road map is there right now from my imagination also i have taken sort of whatever tool i mean uh, devices technologies are available i have put them in place and some trend is seen so i am uh, telling my view based on that trend it is possible okay uh, sixth question was from narayan and nayar and the question is evolution of education system for the future as indicators here how first this how sorry how fast this will take place in a democratic state like ours <laughs> yeah <laughs> in, in the, in the problem with the democracy is uh, convincing the majority okay and uh, people are resistant to change it's very very difficult to convince people so you are comfortable in a particular place you don't want to change so when i say some new systems are there which is good for you you won't accept because traditionally we have been doing things in this manner so i want to do things only in that manner so that's the kind of way the majority will approach and on a fine morning something bad happens and then they will okay this is good so all technologies have been accepted that way okay so in education technology also the change will happen when from gurugula system the university system there have been heavy objection okay that was there but over a period of time that has changed people uh, now went in for university system and now we are talking about uh, i mean from face to face we are talking about e learning there was some resistance how that will be work quite a lot of resistance but once covid came e learning became very very popular i told you, even in the nursery classes Uh, i have seen small kids sitting uh, in front of the computer screens and then uh, reciting uh, rhymes or maybe alphabets and uh, animals uh, lot i mean uh, flowers names of flowers and all okay so that's happening 5 years ago if you uh, talk about uh, this e learning and all people will say it's all not possible in this country it has happened in our country so the evolution uh, you cannot resist it will come okay next this the next question is from harindralal anandh sir and the question is even though everyone is lamenting that majority of the students coming out of the universities are not employable but no concrete effort is being made to improve this condition your comments please yeah <laughs> see all through okay the people have been like that the people who are coming out of uh, universities they are not industry ready even earlier it was like that even today it is like that okay earlier what used to happen is uh, maybe uh, there is a training period of one year or two years during which uh, the the individual will spend with the the institution organization or industry or whatever then learn the tricks of the trade and then starts performing that one hour one year or one and a half year or two year period is given a reduced salary and in some cases you have to pay also right and then once you are ready then only they are fully absorbed into the system but here in the recent times what is happening is they want everything ready made the industry especially the it industry they want the graduates to work from day one without giving exposure to what exactly is being happening in the industry so in the universities 
they learn some fundamentals and depending upon the industry requirements they have to mold the students or the graduate into their stream that they are not ready to do and they lament that they are not uh, industry ready even the people who are lamenting they were also not uh, industry ready when they graduated right now one uh, trend we see today is you do campus recruitment and you are given some assignments to learn these these, these things so before you join you get qualified and that learning they have to do at the expense of the student itself or the graduate himself the industry is not ready to pay for this it's all um, economics that's why they are lamenting so all throughout it was like that only a student who is coming out of the university fresh graduate he cannot be employed in a particular industry because it's the generalist who is coming in coming out and the particular industry has to uh, take pains to mold that uh, particular graduate to his industry okay hope that answers Okay, thank you so much, sir. Uh, that was really a great interactive session. Now, I invite Jacob Bogdis, IEEE EMBS volunteer, to deliver the vote of thanks. Hello, hope I'm audible enough. Yeah, you're audible. A warm and cherished evening to one and all. Most valued honorable chief guest, Professor Dr. Anil B, and all other esteemed yeah. dignitaries and dear uh, participants. I, Jacob Burgess of TKMIT, is privileged to propose a vote of thanks and acknowledge the contribution to those who work hard to make the 79th talk of Inter-Society Weekly Webinar Series. On behalf of IWWS, I give a really heartfelt vote of thanks to our chief guest, Professor Dr. Anil B, who spent his busiest time gracing the occasion. Today, we had the opportunity to hear your thoughts and this is definitely encouraging us in our future events. Your thoughts had enlightened our minds yeah, and shown yeah. us a new path. As a token of love and honor, we would like to present you a virtual memento. Sir, kindly accept it. Thank you. A special mention to Harindra Lal, sir, respected chairperson of IWWS, being the catalyst that inspired us to do our best and stand as a pillar of power. With deep sense of appreciation, we thank you, sir. I would also like to express our sincere gratitude to the people who work behind the scene to execute this event. Our technical arrangement team, especially Mr. Anlan, Ms. Hana, the moderator of the session, Ms. Rashda, who delivered the welcome speech, and Mr. Sai Krishna, who gave introduction to the speaker. At the end, I express my thanks to all the participants gathered tonight. Your active participation was a success of this webinar. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Jacob. As we have come to an end of this session successfully, I would like to announce the next session in the into the series. That means, next Wednesday, twenty twenty one, we will have our eighty talk series with Mr. Philip. Managing Goodbye, and this is Hana signing off. This the meeting is officially closed. Thank you, Professor Anil. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Yeah, for your great time and it's a great presentation. What informations? Thank you very much. We Thank look you. forward Thank you for, for your, your future. Talk. Yeah, we look sure. forward for your future support too. <laughs> yeah, sure, sir. Sure. Everyone is requested to attend the next program. Next Wednesday, same time. Thank you very much.